Hello, my friends. Welcome to my channel. Um, welcome back if you're a, um, a long time watcher and welcome here if you just found me. Um, so I'm gonna do something a little bit different than I normally do. Normally I do um, kind of uh, talking along with the video in real time while I'm working. But um, in this time, I filmed the whole process of doing this cute little guy, and then I did a voiceover. So the speed of the video is going to be four times the speed um, of what it actually took me. But there's no cutaways. Um, you'll see everything that I did. It's just going to be in, in super speed. Um, but I do talk about what I'm doing um, throughout the video. So hopefully that will um, work for you. You will enjoy that. A um, couple things. Uh, the image that I used for the reference photo on this came from Adobe Stock and um, I did purchase it over there. So there'll be a link to, um, to that in case you decide that you want to um, purchase that vi the reference photo as well. And then a list of all the items as I usually do will be down in the description box or beside the video in the description box it, it just kind of depends on where you're um what kind of a device you're watching the video from but um all of that will be listed with links to everything um over on amazon if you're interested in checking those out and um i think that's about it um you may notice if you're super observant that the um that the image, the finished image is a little bit different than what you're going to see throughout 90% of the video. And that is because at the very end of the video, I did um, realize that I had made a um, pretty, to me and to my eye, it was a pretty um, um, large mistake that I um, decided that I just absolutely had to fix. And so the last few minutes of the video are um, in real time, whoops, in real time and um, with me f fixing the mistake that I made um, through, uh, you know, in the rest of the video. So um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, feel free if you don't want to hear me talking and you want to just speed through it again even faster to go ahead and and uh, click those three little buttons and fast forward, um, not fast forward, fast um, speed up the video. If you um, want to watch things a little bit slower, you can slow down the video. So don't forget that you're always um, capable of doing that. And, um, and that's it. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for being here. See you at the end. <laughs> Alrighty, so um, what you're seeing here obviously is, is me doing the second eye and you'll see me using my proportional divider a lot during this process um, where I'm getting the initial sketch down onto the paper. It, um, it's a, a, an excellent, excellent tool for, for um, drawing, making sure that you get your proportions right. Um, double checking your proportions after you've got stuff down and there's many times when I've gone back through and um, you know made some adjustments to the drawing because I felt like the proportions weren't right. So this um, pencil that I'm using is a um, Graphigear 1000 by Pentel. I, um, I really, really like it. It's a 0.3 millimeter, so it's a really super, super fine um, pencil lead. And because it's a mechanical pencil, I only have to have a tiny little bit of it showing. So it really, um, it's really nice. It doesn't, um, it doesn't break on me at all. So it's a really great um, pencil. So you just saw me using that proportional divider again to um, make sure that the ear was in the right place. And it's, it's, it's kind of interesting watching, I'm, I'm actually watching the, the drawing back as I'm doing the voiceover. And um, it's, it's kind of cool for me to watch too, so. If I uh, if I get quiet, it's because I'm I'm kind of watching what's happening on the video, or there's nothing to say. <laughs> so, but 
So some of these little lines that I'm putting in, I'm just kind of, they're, they're super, super duper faint. That side of the face is actually um, very, very light and in um, getting hit by a lot of sunlight. So I haven't decided if I'm gonna put a, a darker background on this and let those hairs show white or if I'm gonna just make them dark. So by just putting that very faint bit of fur in there, it just kind of gives me an idea of where things are gonna go. Measuring, 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 measuring. I <laughs> do a lot of measuring. And here we go. So starting with, um, kind of starting to get in there and get some of these um, values in. This is um, the pencil that I'm using right now is a um, Stedler Mars Lumograph in black and I believe it's the eight. Oh, well, now I switched, but the other one was the Mars Lumograph. And it seems to be a blacker um, pencil lead than some of the other pencils that I have. So it's nice for getting those really dark values in there. Using that stump to blend things all out. Get rid of some of the bright white that I don't really want. I want to save the brightest white for the brightest highlights. The stump is really nice. It's not only a blending tool. It works really well for actually adding color down onto the onto the paper when you want that really super soft blendy gray the, the paper stumps are wonderful for that so during this process i'm actually watching my reference photo uh, more than i'm probably looking at the drawing <clears throat> It's uh, the the eyes and the head are definitely snapping back and forth as I'm as I'm going through this to make sure that I get everything in the right place. I do tend to always start with the eyes, sometimes the nose, but almost always the face and work my way um, out. That just kind of works best for me. I like to get those eyes done so they kind of come alive before I carry on with the rest of the drawing.
that fine that fine tipped pencil again it's a new pencil in my arsenal and I really really like it the other um, pencils that I'm using are the um, Derwent graphic pencils and they come in a lot of different um, softnesses, ranging from very hard to very soft. So they're nice pencils as well. I'm still kind of learning what I, what pencils I like best, what pencils work best for me and the way that I draw. Measuring again. <laughs> Lots of measuring. And I measure all through the whole process because even though you might get your, your drawing down as you start kind of filling in with all of your different values and things, it's really easy for things to, to shift and to change. So double checking throughout the process is never a bad idea. dark value in there with that Mars Lumograph. Okay, so this is a um, uh, an embossing tool that has a very small ball tip on either end. Um, they come in various thicknesses. So <clears throat> I use that to make an indentation in the paper. When you press in, um, it pushes that paper down and then when you go over it with your um, pencil, the pencil glides over the top of the paper and leaves the indented white paper untouched, basically. So it is a way to preserve your whites um, when you want some, some of those white hairs. It's great for doing hair, fur, um, all kinds of things like that. It's, it's, um, it's a great technique that I use 
a lot in this piece. Sometimes it's a little bit of a challenge because you can't really see where your um, where your marks are very well until you put the pencil over the top. But um, with a little bit of practice, you get to the point to where you can kind of have a pretty decent idea of of what you're doing. You want to make sure that the direction that you're going with all of these marks, though, is not um, perfectly straight and um, like little little soldier lines all lined up in a row because hair and fur just does not do that. So sometimes it helps to twist the tool as you're making your mark and it, um, it kind of helps to cause it to go off um, from being perfectly straight and makes it a little bit easier to, to get that little more random look in the fur. can see some of those white marks kind of starting to show. They show up definitely better up high on the top of his head because the, the um, color of the pencil is much darker, so they stand out better. So the darker um, you, uh, you put, the, the more dark values you have around them, obviously the lighter and better the, the white lines are gonna show. That glove I'm wearing has been really, really great. It, um, it helps to keep the oils from your hands off of the paper because um, even if you don't smudge the paper, um, having the oils on the paper will change the way the paper takes um, pencil later on. It, it's, it, it's different. Um, and so using that glove really does a good job of keeping that from happening. Starting to fill in the mouth. See how nicely those lines um, coming down from the top of the lip show up from that embossing tool. Checking that tongue because it doesn't it doesn't look right. I can tell that I got it I got it too big. So coming back in, making some adjustments. And blending all along the way. I blend a lot. Put down a layer, blend it, put down another layer, blend it some more. Darkening up, trying to stay away from the embossed lines just because they can fill in if you're not careful, and I want to keep them as light as possible. of the embossing tool. You can definitely see a difference in the sheen. The, um, the Mars Lumograph is a low sheen graphite. Um, I think with carbon, I think it's got more carbon in it and it definitely is not as shiny as your typical um, graphite pencil. 
but I always wind up spraying my pieces when I'm finished with a with a finish, like a, a matte spray. So it really doesn't matter if there's a difference in sheen because it all kind of works out in the end. More of those marks. Now I'm trying really hard to spin that tool and get it going in lots of different directions so that the hairs look more natural. It's fun to watch the, the hairs pop out when you start putting color down on top of it. Again, I'm kind of twisting that pencil as I'm making those, those marks. And in twisting the pencil, it really helps in getting that kind of organic um, wavy line instead of, instead of something that is just too straight and not natural. more fur or hair I guess in the chimpanzee's case I guess it's hair you want to be really really careful to try and always make sure that those hairs are going in the direction that they're um, that they're growing and that you can see in the reference photo or else it's it's gonna look odd you want to try and make those hairs follow the contour of the face And I'm just kind of doing this to kind of a, for me visually to kind of be able to see the, the edges of things. I do tend to bounce around here and there through the drawing process, just working on whatever I feel like working on at the time. It helps me when I can see the piece coming together the way that I feel like it, it needs to. It's like, I'm glad I did right there because I definitely needed to um, change the shape of his, of his chin. So that looks better. And then you can see darkening the chin up makes the hairs stand out a lot better.
So there I am adding some more of the little embossing tool and trying to make sure that the lines that I put in there are following the lines and the direction that the hair is going in my reference photo. And uh, that was me using some sandpaper to get a little bit sharper tip on the end of the pencil. Trying to keep the, um, the pencil marks light and spread out quite a bit on this side of his head because the light is hitting it. And I need to um, try and make it look like there's lots of, lots of uh, sunlight and sparkly white hair hitting that side of his head. So. more of that embossing tool. Lumograph, the really nice dark carbon black. I still find it can't quite get as dark as I might like. Um, part of that, I think, is the paper that I chose. This is kind of a smooth paper. Um, and I'm still learning and still experimenting with the best kind of papers to use, so it's possible that you just get to a point where, just like with colored pencil, I, I run out of tooth. Not sure. Um, it's not, it, it doesn't turn out to be, you know, bad. Um, I'm just going to continue to experiment and see if I can figure out how to get um, things even darker. I have heard that um, using black charcoal can um, help you get a little bit darker values as well, so might try that on, on uh, this one or another one, I'm not sure yet. So here I tried um, pulling out a um, cotton bud to see if that gave me um, a different uh, blending capability. Um, and I, I'm happy with the way that it, um, the way that it worked. So I will probably use those again. Just uh, adding another layer, trying to get that that area on the back of his head and be behind his ear as dark as I can get it. Now I'm adding in some hairs um, because I'm thinking that if I'm not going to be able to get the, the color as, as dark as I would like, I at least want some of the, um, that area to have some hair texture that shows. So just adding in some, some of that. So here I'm trying another technique. I thought I would try um, getting some of that graphite onto the sandpaper into a powder and then applying it that way. Not sure that that really worked very well. So I might try some, um, you can get powdered graphite already done um, in, in containers. And so I've got that in a, um, I've got that in an Amazon, um, one of my, in my wish list. So. I might give that a try and see if using powdered graphite um, pre-made uh, gives me 
any any benefit. So now I'm kind of just filling in um, the areas between those indented white lines, just trying to get them to show up a little bit more, give a little more, more contrast. Sharpening, that was me sharpening. <laughs> Again, I was twisting that pencil to, to get those uneven lines. It works a lot better when you do that. At least it does for me. And again, looking at that reference photo, trying to figure out where the, the darks and the lights of the inside of the ear go. Time to bring the embossing tool in again. I'm, I'm finding this part, a, I want it a little bit challenging, I guess. Um, in the in the reference photo, when I when I turn that reference photo to um, a grayscale or to black and white, a lot of the side of his face and the uh, his body back behind his ear really looks quite quite dark. And so I I want to try and find a way to show that there's hair there to show to 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 lighten up the values just a little bit so that. I'm not just drawing in nothing but a lot of black. And I, I think it's, it's turning out okay. I may come in and add more values. I think it's better to, to go lighter than you think you're gonna want to start with and then keep darkening it up until you get it where you want it because it's easier to darken it than it is to lighten it. Filling in some of those areas in between the embossed hairs. They're not really embossed. I guess they're more like indented. So maybe it should be called an indenting tool. Maybe, maybe it is, I don't know.
It's darkening up <clears throat> some of this area behind his chin hair. Just trying to get a feel for what I'm going to do next. Holding the pencil back uh, far on the shaft of the pencil also helps to release some of the control that you have. So when you choke up on the pencil and you're holding it down very, very tight to the um, to the pencil core or to the to the end of the pencil to the lead, um, you're you have a lot of control, and quite often doing it that way makes it harder at least for me to to get that kind of you know messy organic random looking kind of hair um, I I'm too precise and it's hard to give that up when I hold it close to the to the front of the pencil but when I hold it very far to the back of the pencil um, again that that takes away some of that control and especially when I twist that pencil a little bit when I'm doing that, it it gives the, a more random look to the hairs as I put them on the paper. So you, in the in the reference photo, um, his the, the photo goes all the way down to the edges of the um, of the photo, <laughs> um, and right now I'm kind of starting to think about uh, not doing that and letting the hair um, in his body just kind of. It's not really fading away to nothing, but rather than filling in all of the paper down to the to the edge, I'm thinking that I might do a little bit looser of a look here. Um, so we'll see. <laughs> um, I'm doing this this uh, voice recording actually um, as I go, so um, I have not finished the piece yet as of right now. So. I'm not sure where it's going to go yet. <laughs> Darkening up that upper lip just a little bit more. So on this one, there I am again, adding some more of the embossing tool to the right side of his face. That's the lightest area of the hair, so I wanna try and ensure that I have plenty of white space mixed in there. Then I'm also gonna try and be careful about where my placement of my, of my um, pencil goes to and, and use that to try and keep it nice and light as well. I want to make sure that I have the, the definition of the hair over there, but, um, but not have too much, too much of the, dar the, the darkness.
don't know what's going on with the, with the uh, temperature value of the video. It keeps going from, from warm to cool. I'm not sure what that's all about. Sorry if that's distra if that's distracting. That's a little weird. Okay, so right there, I'm erasing the pencil off of that area. Um, which is the area on the reference photo where the tuft of hair is quite bright and white. So I just wanted to add a few more of the, of the uh, embossed or the indented lines to try and ensure that I could get that little tuft of hair as bright as possible. If you use the embossing tool over an area that already has pencil on it, it's just, it's just going to push that pencil down into the paper and you're not going to get the, the brightest of um, impressions when you go to put more pencil over the top. So by now I think I've <clears throat> decided that I'm going to um, just let the hair uh, kind of fade into the bottom of the picture instead of bringing the whole piece down to the, to the bottom edges. Darkening up that area underneath the chin. white tuft of, of hair. If it's not dark enough around the light areas, then your light areas aren't going to show up as well. I'm just trying to add some more depth in there. Softening things up a little bit. Again, twisting your pencil as you're making these, these light kind of soft marks helps to not only keep your pencil tip sharp, but also um, to give it a softer, more random uh, stroke. And here I'm trying to see what would happen if I put an eraser in there. It didn't really do anything. The the, it's not dark enough to have to have made any significant difference, but I thought I'd give it a try. Just darkening up the top of the head. It looks a little bit too light to me still. As 
seem to be having a hard time keeping my paper clean. I really should have another uh, a protective piece of paper on there. Just adding a little bit more darkness there between those white hairs. darkness it looks well that helped <laughs> it's interesting to watch back you can't hear me in my brain but I'm going oh do this oh do that <laughs> I think the change of the temperature <clears throat> that's happening on the film must have been because um, it was partly cloudy out yesterday and so I'm, I'm imagining that the camera adjusted depending on whether it was cloudy or sunny out. All right, so <clears throat> now I'm trying to um, get a little bit more depth in there between those <clears throat> those hairs on that side of his face and I'm using kind of a, a V uh, stroke mark um, so that it it kind of adds a little bit of separation to the hairs and creates a, sen a sense of depth how it keeps bouncing out of focus there. I'm sorry about that, you guys. I think it's just, yeah, I don't, I don't know. All right, a little more hair over there on the back side. And again, holding my pencil back as far back on the shaft of the pencil as I can to try and keep those hairs looking random and soft. Just softening the edges of where the fair where the hair meets the white. fighting with my fan, trying to blow the paper off of my page. So here I was adding some, some uh, hairs onto the ear. I must not have set the uh, focus on this section of the video. So, so I'm sorry about that. a little bit more darkness there on his face just kind of now in the in the fine-tuning um, areas of the piece but it's at this point that I kind of start to feel like there's something wrong and I'm trying to fix it but I don't know what's wrong so I'm just working it. It's like something's wrong, but I, I'm not sure. I'm not positive. 
Anyway, so now I'm just adding with my really fine pencil, I'm adding a few more little, little hairs just to get a little variation of the thickness of the hairs that are coming in off of his body. Adding a little more depth there between the um, between his head and the rest of his body, and now I'm darkening down the his uh, his lip, his face. I added some pencil to my stump as opposed to putting the pencil straight down onto the paper, just to make sure that it stayed real nice and soft. And I think I'm pretty near done, but no, <laughs> still adding some more um, depth underneath the chin. Looks better. Getting some more darkness there on the bottom part of his body, I think. Helped a lot. Softening everything up. And I'm done for now, but stay tuned. All right, my friends. So I went through the, the whole drawing and I did all the, you know, I, I finished it. And, and I was staring at it and I'm looking at it and I'm going, this is not right. Something is wrong about this, 100%. And um, so I laid it over the top. I have some programs where I can lay one image over the top of another. So I laid my drawing over the top of the reference photo to just kind of compare and see what I did. And I got the eye, you know, with all my talk of using the... Um, the proportional divider, I got my eye so off. Um, it should be this far from the corner of the eye to the corner of the next eye. Look how far off that is. It is so, it's just so bad. <laughs> the space between the two eyes yeah, it's just, oh, it's just so off. So, I could leave it, but he looks, he just, it doesn't look right. And I don't know if I can fix it. I really just don't know if I can fix it, but I'm going to try. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. I might completely muck it up. So we're, we're, oh, we're about to find out. I can't believe I did that. It's just, ugh, ah, ack. Okay, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do. But I want to try because I'm going to try and fix my mistake. So... Let's just do a little bit of, I'm gonna double check from the corner of the left eye to the edge of his head. I've, I've now got that right because I did a little bit of erasing right there on the edge of his head. So I should be able, oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. I should be able to fix this. Oh my God. Ugh. Ugh, ugh, ugh. 
Okay, uh, pencil. So the edge of his head to the edge of his eyeball should be right here. I'm kind of feeling like I need to go darker so I can see what I'm doing now. So his eyeball edge should be right here. Oh my gosh. Okay. And the edge of his eyelid, sort of, the shadow of the left eye right here. Oof. Okay, the shadow of the left eye. Oh my goodness, is way over here. Yeah, it's way over here where the... So we have to get rid of this. Okay, and it definitely comes up higher. Oops. Definitely comes up higher. Okay, so the edge from the corner of his left eye to the corner of the right eye, and it's up at just a slight angle. So this, oof, I need a darker, I need something darker so I can see what I'm doing here. I don't want to use this one though, so let's use this. Okay, so this is the corner, and it's going to come up. Okay, like that, sort of. This is not going to be perfect, but I've got to try and do something. Okay, and then it comes around. And if this is the eyeball, then this comes all the way around to here. So this is the black part right here. And let's get the black or pen in here. So this is dark. These are his, like his eyelashes, which are now going to be heavier. <laughs> all right, and then this all gets darkened. Maybe I made his eyelashes a little too big. All right, and then we've got some shadow that comes in here. I may not make this perfect, but it's going to be better than it was. It's already better than it was because his his eye was just too close together. Okay, so shadow here, and then this all gets made darker. And this is a little heavier. All right, I'm going to use just the blending tool. work on this eyeball. This comes over here. Something weird that I did here. What do I got to do here? I got to... This shit, the shape is not right. It's not right. <laughs> It's still better. 
it's still better than it was. So I'm, I'm already happier now. I just know I just have to keep working on this, um, this eyeball or this eye just a little bit more and I, I bet you I can get it. Okay, so we're gonna darken this. And actually he has a little bit of eyelash shadow under there. Whoops, boy, that's a, forgot, I forgot I switched the, all right, now here's, down here is part of where the shape is incorrect. Still already looks better. Um, the shape comes down. The eye comes down. And then up, down, and then up. I'm determined to get this, fix this somehow or another. <laughs> oh, his face already looks 100% better. That's, that's what I did. I just screwed up the, the eye. Okay, better. out a little bit oh my gosh it's so much better all right and then um oh i need something really dark but also something really thin and i'm, I'm just, the, the more i use these uh lumograph these mars lumographs the better i like the more i like them better than just the uh, regular Derwent graphics because they just don't have as much shine. Okay. We have them. Let's put these kind of wrinkles in behind between his eyes that I lost a little bit of. I think we have a little bit of shadow here. Okay, better. Oh my goodness. Okay, I think I'm gonna save, be able to save it. All right, something here still not. Right, right. Okay, this is where I feel like I this is one of the reasons that I really like the pens from, you know, like using pen and ink with the the uh, microns is because I can really get sharp, um, sharp lines where I don't feel like I'm achieving that with, with these yet, you know, with the, the pencils. Um, so part of me is tempted to like combine, um, pen with pencil, but I don't know if that's like something that you, I mean, I always, <laughs> I'm always telling people there's no rules, there's no rules in art, but, and then I'm restricting myself to rules. Okay, this comes, yep, that's all right. This is, this needs to be darker all in here. It's 
not perfect. I'm having a hard time getting getting it the way I the way I want it. But it's okay. It's better. And I'm still learning how to use these and Okay, what this is missing is that feeling of um, roundness, that the that, that feeling that the eyeball is round. I'm missing that that look. This just comes to a point. And then there's this little bit of white that's showing underneath the eyeball. And then this is all dark, so why am I not getting that round feeling? I'm going to switch my eraser again. isn't shaped right either. Okay, that's, that's better. Oh my gosh, his face looks so much better now. The, the one thing I could say that I feel like I did, well, I don't know, let's see. What is the angle of the top of the lid to the top of the lid? It's just slight. I guess we're all right. This needs to be darker because this is not lid. And something here still is still all right. This is his lid right here. They do, <sighs> come on now, so this, here, these do connect. But it does get a little shading underneath. I can say that I'm much happier with this now. I really screwed the pooch on that one the first time. <laughs> and now he looks cute because before he was kind of weird looking. <laughs> I just, I was so wrapped up in what I was doing that I kind of lost it. 
okay much better um, it still may not be perfect there could easily be things that i didn't get perfectly right proportion wise hubby's home um, but i'm i'm so glad that i came in and and fixed it so yay all right guys that's it now i'm done probably <laughs> you know how it goes you, the camera will get shut off and then i'll just kind of probably keep working it a little bit but you know it's it now it looks much more like the way that it's supposed to this maybe needs to be just a little bit darker right here still I mean, normally, if I'm not filming, I'm working on a piece for quite a while after I think that I've finished it. You know, I um, I come back to it over and over and again, and I and I evaluate more and more and more. Um, but I feel so much better about this now. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm going to sign off now. Um, if you made it through the whole thing, um, thanks for being here. <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. All right, guys, until the next one. See you later. Bye-bye.